What up, everybody? Sorry I'm later than usual. Turns out I had three pages of just bullshit that came out of Biden's mouth last night. That's nowhere near true. And that's just what I could type down while I was still listening. And turns out when there's that many things when it's single file, it takes a while to, you know, get the proper numbers to fact check things. And boy, oh boy, did he give me a lot. And it was a long night of bullshit, false claims, lies, gaslighting, horseshit. Pardon my French. Probably going to be a lot of that today. But just like every single sentence he said, you could sit there and go, not necessarily there. Kojak, nowhere near. Cochise, fuck face. I mean, whatever you'd like to call the guy personally. You know, but I held it together for the most part. Again, there was just so much to do. It took me a lot longer to do it than a normal episode. And, you know, if he ever started anything on time and not an hour later, it would have gave me more time last night. So I would have made this a little early. Rama tried not to go forever, but he did say a lot of stuff. And again, it was like the campaign trail. He was talking about how they need to get rid of things and against things that he was the one that authored and sponsored and got us into the situation that, you know, we're in, in the first place. So I went over some of them. So it must be done faster. And he just kept going on and on. I'm going to do my best to not go on and on again. There's a lot of stuff. He said, haven't had one this thick and, you know, sitting here just with stuff. So I didn't miss anything. So again, I'm going to try to go as fast as I can, but we shall see. I'm going to start out saying it took him, you know, until a little after 8.30 or so to leave the White House. It took him, what, three minutes, I think, to get down to the Capitol building. Then it took him a half hour to get upstairs just to go into the chamber, whatever the hell they were doing. Five minutes of schmoozing with all the jackasses as, you know, he walked down the aisle to get in the place. And then we get to all the stuff. And I thought it was hilarious. So it was a cat, apparently. When he congratulated Mitch McConnell on whatever it was, and Mitch just sat there, didn't stand. And where are Mitch? He just kept sitting down. That was amazing. You know, God knows what's wrong with him. He's missing. Yeah. Never see his teeth. I don't know. Still don't like him. Didn't stand up for it. I uh, found it funny. Big smile when, you know, Biden congratulated Joaquin Jeffries on being the first minority, minority leader ever in the House. Which, again, that's you know, a good thing, I think. You know, we all know what I think about things. He's a scumbag, but you know, he got it, so congratulations to him. And at least Nancy's gone from that power position. Never thought we'd see it, but now we're going to get into all the bullshit that he claimed and some numbers to disprove it all. And again, the stuff that I don't go over more. There's older episodes where I went over a lot of stuff where it just kept going at the beginning of the season when it comes to green energy and you know, saving the planet and a lot of other stuff. So find them, if you will. I'm going to go back over it again in a couple weeks because more has come out. But they're all there. First claim that I got to was he created 12 million jobs since taking office, more than any president in the first two years or a four-year term. Facts. And here's the truth behind it all. The U.S. workforce in 2019, being the last year before the pandemic, was at 163.54 million. By the end of 2020, you know, with everything lost and came back, gained, it was down to 160.74 million in 2020, up to 161.2 million in 2021. And this year they did get it up to 164.97 million people in 2022. But the problem is millions of those were not created. I'm still trying to figure out where the hell he got 12. Is that, you know... That didn't happen. But people going back to work isn't creating jobs. There were jobs that were already there. Didn't open up in blue states until after the election. And Joe was in charge. And then conveniently, suddenly, huh, a lot of people were going back to work. That's not creation. It's not. Even when I was looking stuff up just to get everything, CNN even fact check it. And said that it was stuff coming back online and not created. Because it's not true. And when CNN's jumping on the bandwagon to go after you, you probably did something wrong, but we are seeing, and we're also, it's a big one, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention. I've seen it, I'm sure you guys have seen it well, that we lost like six figures in December in tech jobs alone, and we lost tens of thousands more in January. So, you know, jobs are going down when they told people to stop working on pipelines, learn to code. Now, all those people that are coding are laying off tens of thousands of people, and the numbers 
you know, keep getting worse and they're going to keep getting worse. Just like if you're watching this, my camera just going batty on me right there, because heaven forbid anything could not just irritate me to no end. But, you know, they still have Google lost a lot of people. Well, it's a giant percentage of their total workforce. Facebook let off a lot, like a lot of tech jobs were going away, which is not a good sign for the economy, no matter what they say. But when CNN's even fact-checking you about jobs created, saying, mm, not so much, homie, especially that number. I mean, people going back to work isn't creating anything. Again, I keep saying it, but they keep saying it, so I kind of have to keep repeating myself and correcting them. The CNN even agreed. Another claim, they have COVID under control and it's not controlling our lives anymore. And it wasn't, you know, it had full hold on our lives when he took office. And I can say just from down here, no, it didn't. Push back my nose getting fixed so I could breathe from the accident, you know, a couple of months, but it was only a couple of months. And then we started doing things like human beings while the places were completely shut down still. Like people came down to see me in like August. No, like, you could do this. And they were still confused in states run by Democrats. Didn't get that bad in a lot of places. But truth about all the COVID stuff is, yeah, he likes to claim that he's got the big old schlong and he's taking control of everything. More people died under Biden's first year of COVID than Trump's first year. When it took over, we didn't know anything. Had You know, trying to figure out therapeutics and there's no vaccines. He, let's not get me started on that one. I don't want to get thrown off of YouTube today doing everything Fauci say, and he didn't have any of that. And Biden still lost more people with, you know, mask mandates on federal, you know, property, which he broke that night, which, you know, amazing. And all the therapeutics and the vaccines that they brag about and that they still push commercials and everything else. At nauseum, when you walk into Walmart, anywhere with a pharmacy, it hurts your head. It's all over the place so much, even though you can still get it and give it to people. People are still dying in the vax makeup, the majority of COVID deaths anymore to all those people that argue with me and say that people dying, you know, right now are just in spite of them and they're the non-mask wearers. No, actually. Look at the CDC numbers. They even admitted it. Just because you don't look up stuff yourself and just listen to what jackasses tell you doesn't mean they're telling the truth. And when I went over the studies before, you know, find that episode you know, the grading by, by state when it came to education, economy, all kinds of different things. And it came to that red states were higher. CDC has admitted that they can't, that if you'd like died of a heart attack, but you had COVID, even though you had a heart attack, it counted as a COVID death. So the numbers are screwed and we'll probably never know the actual, you know, true numbers behind it all. But they did admit all that. And the last one on all this vaccine stuff, because he talked about tax the rich and everyone does. It's amazing how they go after, you know, certain individuals, but they don't mention who got all those billions of dollars when we bought all those vaccines? Wait, those were those corporations. Which is why everyone in the top 1% and all the stuff that happened, they all got richer while we all got poor. Because, you know, mom and pops and all kinds of stuff were shut down while only major businesses were open in a lot of places. And that killed a lot during COVID, yeah. Whole other thing, but all that is, you know, very real. And again, depending on where you lived, I know COVID didn't run our life, you know. Really at all. I mean, bars are still open at full capacity down here. And some, yeah, at some bars, whether they're supposed to or not, they still did it. We didn't have any mass deaths where we were. You know, there were lines every once in a while, which I hated because of my knee, but we didn't even really have a lot of that for the most part. And it didn't run my life. Couldn't go to see live music, but, you know, that was really the biggest thing there. You know, again, they pushed back my nose, but it didn't run my life. And it's actually gotten worse since he took over. When he has all the therapeutic knowledge and, you know, the vaccines that they say are so good. So there's another good one. Again, look up the numbers if you don't believe me. I don't make the shit up. I just listen to what they actually tell me that no one ever cites or uses. Claim, greatest threat to our democracy since the Civil War when it comes to January 6th. Since the Civil War, the Capitol has been attacked, by the way. Let's piss on that. Or Pearl Harbor or 9-11, or anything else, and they just keep spreading it and pushing it and saying it, and what the fuck already? I'm glad that they say they're going to release all the footage and everything that'll be coming out. Let's finally disprove all of it. And hell, I was at Hannah's brother, and yeah, you know, he always has, you know, 
the news on to see stuff. And there was people on NBC, apparently they admitted that, you know, they just went after Trump and neglected to look into, you know, all the people that turned down, you know, extra help because of the optics of it and how it would look, even though they knew what was coming in advance and then turned it around. They even impeached him for what happened, even though they turned down the extra help. That one's good. I'm just pissing off everyone across the board at YouTube this time. They're saying all that, but they ignored it all. And they put the tack on Paul Pelosi in the same exact sentence, I do believe, towards the end of the speech. You know, political violence attacks on our democracy, January 6th, like all of that. I hate to break it to you, they're nowhere near on the same level. At all. And if you keep saying it, you're just going to keep pissing people off. And if you say you don't want to piss people off, why do you keep going out of your way to exponentially make sure everyone hates you with bullshit? At least anyone that knows how to read, because apparently no one, you know. I still get yelled at by people all the time that I'm just crazy, even though I'm reading their own reports coming from their own goddamn people. But greatest threat to our democracy is in civil war. It's kind of slapping the dick to everyone that you know died in Iraq and Afghanistan, you know, after 9-11 or everyone in World War II, after Pearl Harbor, and you know, everything else, just pretend that it never happened just to have a talking point that's full of shit. Again, sorry. We all saw how long we sat there listening to it. It sucked. So I'm gonna let him know that it sucked. Uh, claim they worked together to sign all the major legislation between the two sides. And the truth behind that is, well, when it came to a lot of what we saw, there's very, 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 all the big ones. You know, a lot of them were very partisan and then, you know, 50, 50 split. And then Kamala had to come and be the tiebreaker because with Kamala Harris as vice president, she was a tiebreaker, which goes for the Democrats because it was 50, 50. And they moved through a lot of stuff, you know, completely partisan, which that one's even easy to figure out and disprove. So I don't know how they keep getting away with at least that level stuff. Like, cause that one's obvious clear as day. Another claim that they're building back the middle class. Who's the backbone of the U S truth. Inflation is absolutely gutting the middle class. I know people in the middle class. I'm in the lower, like I'm down there just off the VA and all that, you know, lower beyond lower middle. And I know people all the way through all of them. that are getting completely just killed right now and gutted. Because of the prices of gas, food, anything, you know, heating oil in some places, which I'm going to get into, you know, that, you know, but like with all the inflation, the price of everything, we could beg to give, differ because real wage gains are down, wages are down, pocket money, you have extra at the end of it all is down because everything's so expensive and the prices are through the goddamn roof. I don't care what he says that, you know, they're helping the middle class. How? They're the ones struggling right now. He wouldn't know if there's, you know, many, vacation homes and you know having big lobster dinners with all those celebrities at the taxpayer's expense so they were all welcome for that thing even though they could very well easily afford it all themselves and you know it's killing us and then he blamed you know putin invading ukraine as the reason for inflation it's up all over the world it did not help the grain thing because we do get a lot of grain from them so i'm not saying that before anyone tries to go there but there's countries that are way lower us than us in inflation and there's a few that are way higher than us but if you look at where they are it's not surprising especially with what happens in all those places their economy their government wars happening there you know corruptness and you know remember we're always the end of the u.s they always worry about the u.s dollars the world's you know currency so when we have problems with ours that's going to raise everyone else's because our dollar you know is having problems worth less so then everyone else says problems with theirs not a complete reason for it but it doesn't help but if you look at someone like russia china like there's places that are way worse than us and there's you know that are in war-torn shit sandwiches and there's places that are way better than us way so yeah everyone has inflation congratulations everyone always has inflation you can't just use that as an excuse and that's not an excuse it's not even a good excuse come up with a good excuse finally stop gaslighting people stop lying to people Believe it or not, we'll all be nicer and more grateful. You stop doing that. But they never will because if they told the truth, you know, they'd all be in jail. So there is that. Another claim, jobs moving overseas. Uh, it's not wrote down that America can't lead the world in manufacturing. Talks about chip shortages. Now we need to make them, you know, here again, losing our edge, you know, technology because the chips not being made here and all that like we used to have here's you know truth bomb free on this one nafta he sponsored and authored and all that nafta the north american free trade act and 
Some estimates from EPI.org, the loss of 700,000 jobs, most of which come from California, Texas, and Michigan, you know, manufacturing a lot of the auto industry in Michigan, which is why the place you know, just died, whole state, why they went to hell. Uh, estimated 1 million jobs, almost 20 billion in trade deficits with Mexico and Canada from the imports of those goods, which you saw Trump tried to deal with that and made the whole new trade agreement and everyone, you know, threw a hissy fit and redid you know, anything that he did, but it's really true. Larger agricultural deficits with Canada, you know, with Canada and Mexico. Agricultural deficit with Canada and Mexico have doubled since NAFTA. Price of food is up over 65% from before NAFTA numbers, and that doesn't include the inflation and all the stupid shit happening now in the world. There's a lot of it, so that's not included there. And that's from citizen.org, and this is just the beginning of it. Now I'm saying that personally. There's a lot more that went into it. I just didn't want to have like four pages of just NAFTA. But look it up. Killed a lot of stuff. Everything got worse. And they never mentioned those alleged new tech manufacturing jobs that Joe Biden mentioned. We're going to come on in the next couple years. Didn't mention when the hell that was. That'd be, you know, really good to know, especially as, you know, he shut down pipelines and the you know, oil industry is harder, you know, drilling it and all that for, you know, he should, you know, it's been two years. He should be able to tell us when not. Just, We're going to break ground soon. Like, when the hell is soon? Doesn't tell us anything. I don't like when any politician do that. To include Trump, but at least he tried to throw, you know, numbers out there like, you know, and just say in the coming years, like diabetes, like insulin thing, 2025. Yeah, that's going to help everyone right now. And the price of everything sucks. Thanks. We're going to help you. Two years from now, we appreciate all of that. And he never mentioned that over 200,000 tech jobs, you know, alone have been lost in the last two months combined over, you know, 200,000. This is a safe bet, you know, well over that. It was well over 100,000 in December and we're even higher. Like He never mentioned any of that and what's going on with that. Just kept saying how good things were. And I'm tired of people not being honest, no matter who it is. You know, especially when it's this easy. I mean, don't make it so easy. Claim record low unemployment for blacks and Hispanics. Truth for any of you that happen to fall into that category or want to know anything. As of January 2023, which is last month, black unemployment was at 5.4%, just as low in August of 2019, which means it's not at record lows. Hispanic unemployment was at 4.5% in January 2023, 4.1% in August 2019. And it was lower than the 4.5 just a month or so ago. So it's easy to fact check that. I mean, that just takes like three seconds. Type it in, find the government agency, boom, there's the chart. Not that hard to disprove that he's lying through his teeth for that, but people don't look into it, which is why I do this, which is why I yell at everyone to share the fucking thing. If you do that, it gets to your people and make sure it gets to their people. It can be this whole thing so we can get this going because it's not hard to disprove all this. Uh, bragging that they lowered the deficit by $1.7 trillion from what he inherited. Let's be honest. Let's do some stuff here. I've argued with people this, which I can't believe I have to do because you know, the deficit and the debt are two completely different things, by the way, in case... You didn't know the deficit is just how much we went, you know, into debt. Lowering one doesn't mean we lowered the debt. It just means we went less into debt. Don't know how that's confusing to people, but let's not forget about the big thing. Remember all the COVID money in 2020? They spent, what, roughly $1.7 trillion-ish, really close on extra COVID relief and emergency money, money and sent money for gender studies overseas and money overseas for all kinds of stuff during all this COVID relief stuff. That stuff wasn't in the budget, obviously. Dun, dun, dun. Then there was the stuff in fiscal year 21 after the election, you know, before Trump was gone, where they spent, you know, and gave people checks and all that stuff again, which then, you know, added debt, you know, to us and made the deficit for the following year higher. But ergo, during 2020, the deficit went up by $1.7 trillion. Ergo, once all that stuff expired after that, money was no longer there. So once it ran out, the money that was there was gone. Ergo, the deficit goes down because that 1.7 they tr spent trillion isn't there anymore, which means, yeah, we cut 1.7 trillion off the deficit. You did nothing. That shit just expired. Like, is it really that difficult to comprehend this, people? That went down because the spending was gone from COVID relief. Boom. He didn't accomplish anything. If we want to get to the numbers... The deficit was $984 billion in 2019, $3.132 trillion in 2020, $2.776 trillion in 2021, 
1.375 trillion in 2022. Which means when they got the first year when all that COVID stuff was gone, the deficit was actually up roughly just under four hundred billion dollars from the last year pre-pandemic numbers. Numbers matter. Gaslighting people and lying don't. And that came from government agencies and also amarkfoundation.org to give them credit for it. But you can look up all these things. Like it's not it's actually higher than the last pre-pandemic year now by a couple hundred billion dollars. And look at the COVID you know, money we spent, I mean, on Ukraine already. It's, they can say they lowered it all they want. That's still, you know, that was the money that they spent on COVID not being there. And it's higher than it was our last pre-pandemic year. So suck on that because I'm a terrible person because I can read. Uh, I know. What a dick. Like, stop. Like, you know, I mean, this is easy shit to figure out. Claim gas inflation, gas prices and food prices are down from their peak. Truth behind it is still way higher, way, way higher than when he took over. Average gas was two thirty nine a gallon when Biden took office across the U.S. Yeah, that was the average. Average was allegedly three dollars and fifty cents on January thirty first, twenty twenty three. It's the most recent number I saw. Way up from when he took office, lower than its peak, but it has gone back up. Last time I checked here, by like seventy cents since we drove up for Christmas. In sixty seventy, some ridiculous number. If my brain is working correctly through it all, and it keeps going up. And my favorite part about this is they said, you know, look, it's down, but it's amazing how they said they didn't control anything, they had nothing to do with it. When it went up, yeah, you know, nothing to do with it. It's not their fault at all, but it went down somehow it was their fault. And you could say, what? Well, but they released, you know, oil from the strategic reserve. Yes. And they also sold a million barrels of that to China, not more. How the hell did that help us? Oh, wait, it didn't. It just lowered it. So then they could spend more money to buy it all back to fill the reserve back up. <laughs> but it's farther into debt. For anyone with common sense, and this should be firing off in your head right now. And it's trending in the wrong direction right now. And again, they're not getting any credit for that. But I do love the monthly tweet. You know, maybe be weekly. I don't know where I see him on Jay Rosinski show Twitter on there. I see it. And I retweet it all the time because every time he says, look, they're down this much from their peak. The number he says they're down by keeps going in the wrong direction. The number keeps getting smaller. It's getting closer to the peak price again. But again, what the hell do I know? I can just read. Damn shame. Leads to some fun things on Twitter with people, though. Uh, claim he brought up the lead pipe issue. Talks about being 13th in the world in infrastructure. He talked about education numbers. Talked about codifying Roe v. Wade. And all our bands he talked about. And the Supreme Court is part of it as well. So I put a lot of these in there because they come down to one thing. He was in government for 47 years before becoming president. 39 or so as a senator. Eight as vice president. He was there passing legislation, running everything while all of these fucking things were falling apart. Education numbers are abysmal. And he was there during all of it as it you know went down. Codifying Roe v. Wade, he was there for that many years as a senator, as vice president. And then he had two years be almost before they did anything about it at the Supreme Court. And they still haven't done anything when they had the majority, which they could have done, but their voters are still going to vote for them like it makes a difference. Because that's called dumb. You didn't do it for this long. They didn't do it when they had the majority in both. What makes you actually think they want to do it? Because they had the complete ability to do it, and they didn't do jack shit. So please, shut the fuck up. Especially when they make the argument about the Supreme Court doing these things. Guess what, bro? Supreme Court guys hold up things, you know, guys and gals, justices, when it's up to constitutional issues. It's not in there. It should have been a state issue the whole time. And if you read the first decision for Roe, the arguments they made to make it a thing were jackassed and made no sense for what they were doing anyway. They didn't even fit it. I don't know how it went, but it's a state thing. It should have been a state thing. If you wanted to do anything about it, you've had 50 years. And a lot of majorities through all of that. But you didn't do it. But please just stop using it. And it's going to gaslight their base. That's all they're doing, just try to keep them stoked, even though they could just sit there and go, yeah, they really didn't do anything, did they? No. Fuck, they didn't. But they're going to keep doing it. I haven't seen any full bans on anything you know, that excludes medical stuff. Again, I could be wrong, but I haven't read anything in any of those just used for their base. And also, while we're on you know, lead pipe stuff, remember Obama when he was yeah 
when Joe was VP and he went to Flint and mocked him and took a little, not even a sip of water there saying everything was fine. I do. And guess what? They still have the problem. I'm saying there's all this lead pipe. Like you've been in government, you've known about it for how long? Yeah. Here we still are. There's all a bunch of red tape and words. No one actually accomplishes anything, which is why everything's falling apart. And there's worry about regulating and never getting anything done to do anything. And talking about gay marriage like he did, he signed this to keep it a thing. I just want to let make sure everyone else go see what he had to say until him and Obama were rerunning for the second term. See what Joe had to say about gay marriage and all that. It's enlightening. Because he didn't give a fuck about them or think they should have anything until they ran again when they went, oh, we, need, we can get this base to vote for us. And here we are now. He never had anything nice to say until then. Sorry, when you're that old, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. It just doesn't work. There's a big thumbs up. Uh, claim. Moving the manufacturing supply chain back to America and doing it ourselves. Claiming all manufacturing materials should be made in America again. Guess what? I agree with that. You know who else agreed with that? Trump. And he said it for years. And they called him xenophobic, racist, nationalist. You know, all these things saying we shouldn't seclude ourselves from the world. And they said all this shit about it. Then suddenly Joe starts saying the same thing like it's a good enlightened new idea when they, you know, called him a racist for years for saying that. Because it should be made here. We wouldn't have any of the problems that we had if it was here. Trump said it for years. Please go back and please, any liberals that are listening to this, please find somewhere where they didn't chastise him and call him a racist for trying to do it or nationalist or anything else. Because you know they did it. Because you heard them do it. But now it's a great idea. It's amazing how much that all twists claim. They're lowering the price of insulin, which I mentioned earlier a little bit, by a lot. And also the price of prescription drugs are going down because no one ever did anything about it. That's, you know, that he's the best ever for it and all that. Trump signed stuff to get, you know, insulin prices lower and to get some drugs lower. He literally did all these things years ago. Like he signed executive orders and stuff to do it uh it's the way it is and the lower you know the prices now obviously they're astronomical the prices of everything and profits are through the roof everywhere in the two years that joe's been president like they're just tick tick they just keep going higher and they're not going to do anything about it i believe that's what he said until 2025 so what good does that help anyone now and the prices are still going up don't worry we'll help you in a couple of years I'm the government and I'm here to help. Reagan didn't like it. Walter says it incessantly to me because he never drops it. But those things are already like fixed. And again, he's been in the government for 47 years and as vice president and the Senate before he was president. Why the hell didn't they do anything then? Because prices were still going through the roof and astronomical a lot of things then. No one did anything about it. And they've been in here for two hours. They haven't years. They haven't done anything about it. When they had the majority for two years, they didn't do anything about it. Sorry, just under whatever. Yeah. You know, Again, all these things, like they're so easy to disprove and all that, but, you know, he keeps doing it again, 47 years. See, that should have went to the other one, but what the hell have you done? Like, if you wanted these things done and all those people wanted it done, you would have done something by now instead of making sure daylight savings time is, you know, a forever thing that's never going away. Like, that's the shit they pass. Immunity for drug companies and stuff. Like, they do all, like, if any of this important stuff they say is important mattered, one, you guys wouldn't be you know, having stocks in these companies, which, well, they get rich, you get richer. That's a fact, too. And two, you guys would have done something. Uh, claim, utility prices are going down because of green energy. Um, it, we aren't anywhere near ready for sustainable. If Texas, you know, those years, a few years ago, didn't prove it, you know, proved anything, it was that. It's not ready, and it's physically impossible to do it all. That way, it's it's not sustainable. I know people in the energy field that are going, well, it's not sustainable. Physically impossible. By the way, thank all the child laborers overseas for, you know, in the mines in some of those countries for getting all this lithium and stuff. But our grids suck. We need to worry about that. My heating's, my, my parents, their heating oil prices over doubled for, you know, a tank of heating oil to heat their house during the winter. And that's in PA and it's even higher in places like Michigan. And other things. And it's easy to disprove it when you see the price. Like it's not doing anything. Except harming the planet more. Because we have to burn more. Like it Burn more you know, fuels to mine this stuff. And get it just to ship it over here. Like it does nothing good. Don't worry. Episode's back. But you know, right at the beginning of the season. That was a really good one too. I liked it. Like doing it. Proved a lot of stuff. A lot of facts. Check it out. But 
it's a crock of shit. That was another lie. He doesn't matter why because we pay all of his bills. So what the hell does he know? Uh, claim corporations don't pay their fair share. They're cheating the tax code. They need to tax them more. They have made record profits. We all know that. But a lot of industries and companies don't pay their fair share in taxes, including oil companies, billionaires. He was going after literally everyone saying all this shit. But here's the truth. If you look at the numbers when it comes to these corporations and taxes, it's easy to find the truth. Remember last year, Walter, I went over them all because we got all their tax information. It's available, easy to find, public record. And that goes to some billionaires as well. If you look at Elon Musk, he paid a record number in taxes last year. And he paid more than Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, Google, Amazon, George Soros, Michael Bloomberg, Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos, and all of them combined. But we never mention any of them. They don't. I mean, he paid more than all those corporations. He's just one person. Look at the profits the corporations were making. Just saying, but the more they tax them, this is the thing we're going to learn because they did it before. Notice they said they were going to do all these tax increases. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but my Walmart super centers are now 98% self-checkout all on your own. Oh, a lot of people out of work from it. It's like a lot of automation in places. You charge them more, they're going to find ways to get rid of the jobs through automation, you know, going to a fast food place and making your own order. If they're taking a lot of those things away, again, self-checkouts, all of that. Because they only care about one thing, profits. And it always happens every time they try to do it. They'll just move jobs away and do all that to where it costs less to make the things and wages. And they'll just keep doing it because paying you know, tariffs and all this stuff to bring it in is less than they'd be paying there. And no one gives a goddamn. Look at all the tech jobs gone. Look at the electric vehicle throughout the was GM or son. And I know Jeep moved their shit down to Mexico already, even though they said they were going to build it all here. Here, You didn't know that. That's a fact. Look it up. They moved. A lot of it. Then we have to wait until the Reduction Act. Yeah, Inflation Reduction Act kicks in. That's billions of taxes to these people. Prices will skyrocket even worse. They'll keep going up. Nothing will get better. And people like me, where I am in the world, are completely fisted on it because all they care about is profit margins. And they don't give a fuck about any of us. Anyone that doesn't know that and breathes into all their bullshit means nothing. And by the way, we had record tax income last year as a country. And still went further into debt. And, might I add, he was there. And all these people agreeing with him that are all zombies walking around in the chamber. And they were all there, too, and wrote the tax codes. Like, they're the ones that gave the ability to have all these breaks and things so they don't have to pay a lot. That's all on them. They wrote it. When saying Trump this, Trump that, I honestly remember seeing people having record profits like they're having right now under him. And he also didn't write the fucking tax codes and then yelling at them for using the tax codes that they wrote and gave them. In case you didn't know. That's about the goddamn dumbest thing I've heard in a while. Another claim, not taxing those making less than 200,000, 400,000, whatever it was. It's helping those, you know, with breaks and taxes and stuff who needs them. Fact, you know, some truth for it. Inflation and gas prices are crazy high and screwing so many of us right now. Who cares if you, you know, tax us. Yeah, we're not going to raise your taxes. Yeah, but the price of all this is worse than raising taxes when it costs as much as it does to do everything. And uh, child tax credits went from a few thousand a year down to a few hundred barely this year. So uh, it's actually less money in their pockets, Joe, for you know, anyone who can count, read basic numbers. Claim, though, talking about cops, their policies, the violence, talk minorities, family need to have with their children that we'll never understand because, you know, we're white. Policies need to change in the way they handle, you know, situations. Truth. He wrote and sponsored the 94 crime, crime bill. The mass incarcerated minorities at a crazy rate. And he said all the crazy racist stuff after he did to it, they're extreme predators with no conscience. Yeah, that came out of his mouth too. Funny how Trump and anyone that voted for him is racist, but he literally said that. He can't walk into a 7-Eleven without a slightly, you know, Indian accent. He's, you know, he's not kidding. You know, all of that. And I agree with them, though. Bad cops need to finally be held accountable, get immunity. You know, gone. I said that during the Tyree Nichols episode last week, because that will actually get rid of a lot of it. But then it was just a bunch of gaslighting and bullshit. Chokehold's been banned in a lot of places. And the beating we saw of Tyree Nichols was completely illegal, but they did it anyway. And I don't like his parents being used as an example and just happening there as the face. So they're there and then them not do anything. So that's what happens in most of these situations. Which I really don't like, regardless of who does it, celebrity, politician, anyone. It's like it's a crock of shit because nothing will happen. True story. Claim debt ceiling raising is the only way to solve the problem. You know, how much can we go into debt? It's like paying credit card debt with another credit card, which puts you further into debt. 
If you were broke, you wouldn't keep borrowing money just to stay afloat and keep overspending. You would figure out how to make sure to pay all your damn bills without continuously screwing it. And people attack Trump for going bankrupt with his you know, companies. At least he actually filed for it. He just didn't keep you know, borrowing, 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 and printing money to make the situation even worse, which isn't helping the inflation thing, which makes all that worse because we want to spend you know, trillions of dollars on dumb shit that we don't need and on other countries' stuff to help them. We can't help ourselves and, you know, all that homeless people and stuff we don't care about and need to feed. We could if we stopped taking care of everyone else on the planet. Uh, claim Republicans are going to hold everything hostage with the majority in the House, bringing it up. They were, you know, doing the whole we're going to kill grandma again, saying they're going to get rid of Social Security and Medicare. And it's the truth. Remember when he legit ran on that? And all the times he said that the videos are still on YouTube where he repeatedly said that he tried to get rid of it. And he would get rid of it, and he's going to try to do it again. He said it forever, so I don't care what he said last night when he said it that many times for decades. Doesn't really matter what you say now. That's the truth. And, you know, and if, you know, they're so worried about it, they had the majority in the House, Senate, and Kamala as a tiebreaker, so they could have, you know, done something about it. But it always comes down to we're trying to kill seniors and take away their benefits and stuff as they get older. Did when Paul Ryan was around, like they just do it. They say it all the time, gaslight people and stuff like that to keep them mad at us. And he said, What? It's not all Republicans. This is getting booed out of the building. Funny, he tried to save it after that when he literally called out all Republicans, if you actually listen to it. Claim anything about the border, claims numbers are being down by what, 95%, I6% across the board, fentanyl seizures, homelessness in Hungary, American sovereignty against the Chinese balloon veterans, all kinds of stuff that went in there, sovereignty in the border. Fact. Legit record numbers were just saw crossing the border, never mind getaways, at you know the southern and northern borders in December. Six figures in opiate deaths for the first time ever because of fentanyl. Where do you think it's coming from? We need to stop them from making it. Well, going from China to Mexico and up over the border, how the hell do you think it's getting in here in the first place? Record seizures, but the deaths keep going up, which proves how much is getting through for anyone that actually correlates and knows how to understand that. And then there's the money. Also, as we're talking about, you know, all these things, they all grouped into one for me. All the money were being spent on housing the illegals and healthcare and phones and everything else. We're giving them, you know, and spending it all on that and then saying that, you know, we shouldn't have homeless, starving veterans and citizens and children and all that. Well, if you stop, if you close that down, stop spending billions of dollars on that, we wouldn't have this problem. Actually, if you gave a shit, we wouldn't have that problem because it's been a problem for forever that keeps getting worse and they never do anything about it. So suck on that and suicide numbers still suck and going up and they've really done nothing to help that or the va don't care who you are it's still happening and the border as they're talking about you know the sovereignty of the nation because of the balloon like they broke our airspace you could have shot down over alaska you let it go all the way across the country over nuclear silos and all kinds of stuff and you're talking about sovereignty like the border's wide open it really is look at the numbers that keep going up we have no sovereignty the balloon didn't help any of that. And I love McCarthy's face while he was saying all of that. Because it was hilarious. We haven't had sovereignty in years, no matter what anyone tries to tell you. All you got to do is, we don't have borders, you have no sovereignty. True story. Claim. All the money being spent on Ukraine and Russia and what the war is working. We're having this, you know, united world front saving it all. Accountability with how good it was spent and being tracked. And it's funny with him mentioning, ten, you know, inspector generals at all. That's like the biggest form of hypocrisy. But truth, cities are still being destroyed. People are still dying every day. We've spent billions. And Russia's still, you know, wiping place out. And let's also mention there's no accountability on any of that, just like Afghanistan. And they say they care about people dying and all that, but they have billions, you know, in our own country, but they have billions to spend on that, which is allegedly doing so good, even though Russia's still, you know, making giant chunks, killing a lot of people in the process. And there's $20 billion that's unaccounted for by anyone to include an inspector general because you didn't put one on any of it right away. All you do is look at the shit. So thanks, no thanks for trying that. Again, claim violent crime rates are down since he took over after a spike in 2020. Simple property crimes are down, stuff like that. But violent crime is through the roof in a lot of places. All you have to do is look. I'm just going to leave it at that. Look it up your damn self. I'm not going over it again. I've done it a lot in episodes. Find the shit yourself. And then other claims he made, you know, some stupid shit that didn't deserve its whole thing, but fast food workers and burger places being forced to sign non-competes. Like, you can leave McDonald's and go work at Hardee's. No one gives a goddamn. Like, fast food workers getting non-competes that are making the burgers. 
Like, that's not even the thing. I figured he would have been like wrestlers or something like that. And he went there. Just funny student loan debt they talked about. Can't be lowered the way he did. He can keep talking about it. But what does he actually try to do except a way where it couldn't work? So he can go, oh, look, but they turned it down. I tried, even though he did it in a way that he knew wouldn't work. And they all should have known didn't work, but it gets his voters, even though he's already tried it and it failed and he's broken that promise. And now here he is doing it again. Feeding the world and we can't even feed our own. Already went over that veteran suicide down, which she said. Yeah, but 22 to 24 veterans age 18 to 64 commit suicide a day, while 18 to 20 veterans between the same age group die from self injury. And that was a number from October 4th from missionrollcall.org. And once again, the VA is a joke. I can tell you that. From the inside, uh, red flag laws are on the books in a lot of places, and they're, you know, can be very much abused. So if we get a way to do it better, that would be great. But Right now, there's so many ways people could screw with people with that whole entire thing. Uh, minor suicides are up. That is true. But it's amazing how the more they push sexuality and drag shows and <laughs> transgenderism and all this stuff, that the numbers keep going up because it's not like they're already confused enough as it is. As a kid, we all were. And then they keep throwing all this shit, which makes it even worse. They don't know what the hell's going on. They should just be worried about being a kid, getting through school, and then dealing with stupid shit. We're pushing all of this, and the number keeps going up. That should surprise no one. Talked about no political violence of any sort, kind is acceptable. While he did nothing but talk shit about the other side all night and the stuff they ignore that happens all the time from Antifa, BLM, probably all kinds of other things that, you know, we never hear anything about Antifa or BLM. Remember, Antifa, it's just an idea. BLM's nice, even though look at the leader of New York. Look, I mean, I've quoted them repeatedly. We've all seen it. And they're all hate groups if you really look at them. And he also mentioned laws being upheld and election laws and all that. Those have all been ignored for years, and they're changing the laws just to make you know, things more corrupt and to get rid of certain petty crimes from being you know, actually charged, which then is why other crimes you know, just keep going up. There's no consequences. They're going to keep doing it. Anyone that grew up or had kids already knows that. Uh, hate is everywhere. So I'm going and attacking Republicans like you did. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate saying that we shouldn't do it and then doing it at the same time. Uh, Millie's a fucking joke and go fuck himself, literally. Joe Manchin not clapping at anything. That was cool. What the fuck was Bono doing there? I did catch that. Like, Bono? No, I don't think that. What the fuck is Bono doing there? Just saying. And God bless, yeah. This one super thing, the fencing around the Capitol and the money spent on that and millions of dollars to get that there and secure it and get security and all that. But saying that the border wall would be ineffective, useless, and expensive. And also, without mentioning you know anything that happened at the Capitol building with it being taken over by woke people chanting trans lives matter, and they don't mention that, but they talked about how bad the Capitol insurrection was this thing, even though now NBC has even came out and again said that, you know, these things were told, but they didn't want to do it because it would look bad, you know, bad optics. And now all the video footage, thousands of hours that they didn't show is going to be released. So it won't make a difference. Liberal media won't say anything and everyone that watches it, bat shit crazy, but now, it's amazing how they say that that fencing doesn't work yeah, in a wall, but they have it around them because that'll work and stop people. And they keep doing it every year for it. Like it's no one's there. No one cares that much. Just optics to try to make people think that we're all going to die. Guess what? We are not. All stupid people might. The rest of us with brains can look around and go, yeah, what's up, doc? Because this, it's just dumb. And again, what the hell is Bono? But what is Bono doing there? And why don't we mention the woke he's taking over? The whole Capitol building chanting, you know, trans lives matter. What? That's an insurrection. That's what happened there. No one cares. But I'm going to jump off. Sorry for going so long. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Don't forget Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Share it, share it, share it. You don't have to have me do it as much. and feel like you're getting spammed. Sorry, taking so long. And until next time, deuces, peace. I'm out.